Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today I'm taking more of your questions in a segment of Ask Judy. If you're enjoying these, please do hit like and subscribe and do feel free to share with anyone you think might enjoy. I have a question here from Stephen. Judy, can you describe for us the kind of relationships you and others had with the crew and then describe what roles make up the crew? Fans mostly think of the actors as having strong relationships, hopefully, but I'm certain there must be crew members that you were equally as friendly with. I'd love to hear more about that aspect of the experience. Definitely, especially when you spend nine seasons together. I mean, the cast was incredibly close, but we had a lot of crew members that were with us for many, many seasons. Um, our sound uh, engineer was there, Bill Flannery, for many, many years. Our script supervisor, Dick Chafee, was there for many seasons. Uh, we had camera, camera crews changed over, our cinematographers changed over. Um, as did our camera operators. I always felt like it was a good idea to get along well with the camera operator because they were making sure you were in focus <laughs> and looked good. And also, uh, they could they could let you know, they could give you hints, you know, clues about things. I remember sometimes being told, uh, you know, a camera operator might tell me, uh, you know, this is not a great angle. Maybe if you move a bit this way, different things or the cameras cutting in a certain place, so beware of this. So I learned so much from getting those pieces of information from the person behind the camera uh, because the director couldn't always see exactly what the camera operator could see. So I really appreciated those aspects. Uh, and Richard, Richard Thomas, was very, very close with the person who did what we call our craft services, which was kind of like the coffee and the snacks and all that. They were very good friends and would go out and he would always be at different parties that Richard had and um, Eddie Villa, he was, he was amazing. So we did, we developed those relationships with them. The Waltons had a softball team and many members of the crew played on that. Bill Reynolds, our um, makeup artist for many, many years, uh, was sort of the captain and coach of the team. He was um, the brother of Debbie Reynolds. Uh, Debbie never visited the set, but he would tell us uh, lovely stories about her at times. Uh, he did her makeup uh, a lot for different things that she was doing, you know, concerts and things like that. So yeah, you did get close. It was a wardrobe uh, mistress who, invite, who invited me to a horse show and really introduced me to horses and jumping and all of that, which became a lifelong passion of mine. Uh, so she would literally, she took me to horse show. She took me out to the stables where her horse was, Linda did. And so, you know, we were very close for the time that she was on the show. Uh, many of the assistant directors uh, that I worked with, you know, I considered, you know, good friends. And uh, so, yes, you're, you're very right that, um, that we did have good relationships with the crew. We had great crew members. Uh, and they were a lot of fun. They were very professional. They took good care of us. Uh, they did a great job. I'd like to think it was a very happy set. People seemed to enjoy working on the set, and I feel like both cast and crew worked to make that the case. The crew is broken down into a lot of pieces. There is the whole electrical department, the, the camera department, which is headed up by the cinematographer, and then there is his whole lighting crew, and then there is the whole grip crew, which um, are the people who move all of the pieces, like the dolly that, that uh, the camera's on, or the setting up of things that go in front of the lights, um, all of those types of things. There's the property department, there's the wardrobe department, there's the hair and makeup department, there is the art department and set so you've got, you know, the, the art director who over, oversees the look of it, and then you have the people who implement that vision, the construction people that build what needs to be built, and the set dressing that dresses the set, which is different than the props. The props are the things that we handle, as opposed to the furniture and everything that goes on the walls and everything for the set decorating. There is the greens department that arranges for, this is this is not a real tree, by the way, but I love it. Gives a little green to my, um, to my life here. <laughs> uh, but, you know, any sort of greenery in and around, inside, outside, that's the greens department. Then there's the sound department. So you have the sound engineer and you have the people who work the mics, the boom mics or the handheld mics. And I, I'm sure I'm forgetting all kinds of departments, but it, it does take a lot of, a lot of people 
uh, to actually run this, the crew, the camera department, the camera operator and his first AC, second AC, um, all of that team is all, you know, kind of under the cinematographer as well. Uh, so yeah, a lot of moving pieces. I, I couldn't tell you the number of crew members we had on the Waltons, but it was a lot. And then there's the whole production team. There's all the assistant directors who, who manage different areas of the production. And then you've got the office where, you know, the production manager and and the producers are, and the writing, you know, the the script editor, and then you've got the post production team that does the editing and the sound design, and and you know the sound effects. Uh, so yeah, many many pieces. <laughs> Raymond had two questions: How did the characters change over the course of the series? What did you learn about Mary Ellen at the beginning of the series that was different near the end? Hmm. So, well, I think. You probably watched all of the characters evolve. Uh, Mary Ellen was really a rebel in the beginning and then she kind of toned down a bit. I mean, she was very strong-minded all throughout, but I think once I sort of got married and then had John Curtis and then went into the nursing and being a doctor, some of the younger characteristics uh, maybe softened up a bit. Um, frankly, I had more fun when she was young. <laughs> I liked you know, the whole rebellious, I'm not going to conform, I'm going to go be an explorer, or I'm going to be, you know, a dancer or an actress or whatever. Uh, those those were fun. Uh, it was um, once I sort of got married, then I wasn't at the house all the time, which I missed. And then unfortunately, when they had Kurt be theoretically killed at Pearl Harbor, then I was back in the house, which was good. But as we grew and we were sort of out and about, some of the core stuff at the house changed. Um, and I think some of that dynamic was the most fun for us when we were all there and kind of kids and stuff. Uh, so you saw a lot of the characters change and, and grow into their maturity, whether it was with relationships, uh, their choices in terms of what direction they went in their professional life, who got married, who had kids, all those things were the ways in which we changed. Um, in terms of you asked about um, what did I learn about Mary Ellen at the beginning and near the end? Um, you know, that I think she had a lot of admirable qualities that she always defended her family. You know, when she was perfectly willing to get into a fight to defend Jim Bob from being picked on, things like that. Uh, she never backed down from anything. All of those things, uh, that aspect of her being rebellious, I really admired that she didn't play it safe. And I think those were those were things that that I really liked about her. And then just sticking it out. I don't know that I would have had the perseverance to do what she did in wanting to get into ner into becoming a doctor, to just keep going back and say, I'm going to keep coming back. I'm going to keep doing this. <clears throat> you know, that took a lot. So I think that was very admirable as well. So those are things... I kind of learned. Then uh, Raymond had another question where he said, sometimes in a series, a character emerges who starts as a minor character and rises to be a major character. The show then becomes about this character. How did the Waltons keep this from happening? You know, it was always kind of an ensemble show. Of course, it was told from the perspective of John Boy. And it really, in the beginning, focused on the adults. Uh, but they allowed each of the children to have storylines and to to have a direction they were going in their life. So I think there were just so many opportunities to have stories about all of the family that they wrote it that way. And they didn't, uh, you know, there, there were so many characters that I think they just did a wonderful job of incorporating all of that. And whether there was specific interest in one particular character that wasn't featured as much, I have no idea. We never got that, the feel of that. So I'd like to think that it was a tribute to how strong the cast was as an ensemble and that dynamic that kept the audience interested in the whole family as a core, as a core group, as opposed to just one individual. Roger asked, do actors in general have a high IQ in order to memorize lines? And can actors take classes to assist them in learning the skills of memorization? Oh, well, I'd like to think that we had a high IQ. Of course, that is the answer. Uh, I, I think memorizing is like a lot of skills. 
uh, whether it's um, being an athlete, whether it's music, that it's repetition. It's doing it. Uh, it's not something that you just do once in a while and then never and never do. I think the fact that I started doing it from the time I was very young, it, it came somewhat naturally to me. It was not particularly difficult for me to do. Um, and it was a skill that was very helpful to me in school as well. If I had to just, you know, memorize a bunch of stuff to pass a test. If it was like, I'm never going to use this again. I just need to pass this test. I'm not recommending that as a way to learn. I think it's better if one really understands it and can use it. But um, it's it's sort of short term with, with television. You just have to remember it long enough. So uh, are there classes for that? I, I don't really know. I, I think it's just practice. And a lot of times actors will work with other people to run lines. You know, I know when I did plays a lot of times, you know, you get together with fellow actors and go, hey, let's just get together and run lines. And you just do them. You do a scene over and over and over until you just know it. And I think everybody's capable of that. If you've ever learned songs, if you, if there's like holiday songs that you know, or songs from, you know, the, from the radio that you just learn, you know, it's how many times have you sung it? And, and memorizing lines is kind of the same thing. That's what I have for you for this segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons, Ask Judy. Uh, I hope you'll join me for the next time on Behind the Scenes of the Waltons and for more Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.